plan to go wherever I can, to say whatever I can, to tell the world of the things that must be done. Never! To bring pressures to bear on some of the In order to save what okay. possible, I'll that country. That is beautiful love. And I gain a fear the oppression of one by another. He's actually not a bad soccer player either. <laughs> <laughs> I think one day if I live long enough, you might be a president for the country. It's Dispatch Live's business podcast. My name is Ted Keenan. Stay tuned for more. Dispatch Live is talking to Songo Mpange, who is a great team pupil at the Centre of Excellence. He's also a senior debater, which makes an interview very tricky because they tend to argue. <laughs> so, Angela, you've attended the um, ITC summit. You are the next generation. In 10 years' time, what we spoke about here today will be forgotten history, such as the uh, fast development of the ITC section. How have you enjoyed yourself so far? Um, I've enjoyed myself so much because we know that we are the next future. However, it is then up to us to then take whatever that we've learned from this experience and make sure that we take it to the future. And then we make sure that in everything that we do, we take drastic measures that um, obviously they have told us here what to do. Um, we know that technology revolves around us. Technology is everywhere. Technology drives the world. So basically with us being here, it gives us an opportunity to then engage with other people, to engage, to know the true meaning of technology and then understand what we then have to do with this information and how we then could use technology. Um, they have spoken about how technology affects business, how it then basically is a catalyst towards businesses prospering, towards our country prospering. And then that gives us an ideology of what we are supposed to do as the youth of South Africa, because we understand that with the advancements done in the fourth industrial revolution, we cannot run away from technology. We have seen the advancements of technology during the um, COVID-19 pandemic. However, us being here, us interacting with other people, with the premier, with every individual from here, gives us, uh, I could partially say, it is a way forward towards bettering South Africa. The information that you've got today has it come as a surprise to you, or can you think ahead and say, we knew that, we've just got to adapt it? Um, as I said already, technology is around us. So they're just giving us more information on what to do with technology, how technology revolves around us. So us being here and then giving us this information, it's basically like what we knew, but some aspects you're like, oh, that. So you get a sense of, how, 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 how technology is actually very important in our lives because this is how we're going to live for the rest of our lives. Do you have an idea of what you will do after school? Um, the careers are very broad. However, I want to revolve around something that has robotics because I know that is something that will never expire. Moving into the fourth industrial revolution, we know that we're going to deal with robotics very much. However, that is something that I want to do. I want to um, get into that field and make sure that I do anything. If I do um, health sciences, I might do biomedical engineering, which is basically like helping people who have been in an accident by using technology to form limbs so that they can also live better lives. So this is a way of doing, and this is how it's going to be. We just have to adapt to technology. Do you see yourself as a creator, or do you see yourself as somebody who can embrace the future? I see myself as both. Firstly, I want to embrace what has been done by another people. I want to do that by ensuring that every trusting measure that they have taken, I disrupt it so that I can um, in, like enforce other measures to make it better. I also see myself as a creator because as people, you are not limited toward, towards what someone else has done. You can easily do something um, that you want to do. However, I will see myself as a creator so that um, other people can become. This might be a tough question, mm -hmm. but if we were sitting here 
with a broad represent, representation of the youth of South Africa that is like you, 16 years old. How many of them would grasp exactly what you're saying and how many, for how many of them this would be like Egyptian? Um, I think we have to look at the broadness of technology, how many people understand the difficulty of technology. I think the problems that we face as youth is um, not understanding how technology can be convenient to our lives, but at the same time, we face situations, for example, there are children in the rural area who do not have the same access that we have um, as children who live in the cities. However, Ted, I believe in that um, this could be changed by actually the government and also the youth coming together and making sure that every implementation done towards technology, because we are driving towards the same goal here, saying that during the fourth industrial revolution, what we want to achieve is a better South Africa that is fully advanced, so that when you look at um, the countries that are able to um, move around technology conveniently and effectively, then they mention South Africa. However, I feel like that is not possible if we do not engage the youth of South Africa. So um, we can easily say that we have to sit down with the youth, those who don't know it, and then um, talk about this technology thing. Make them understand how is it convenient? How, wh why do we need technology in our lives? And then in that way, we are able to be advanced. We, are, we know what we need to do as the youth, and also we are able to take drastic measures that will help us and the country at large. If you had a few minutes with Premier Kamabugyani and he said to you, look, you've got one wish. What would that wish be as far as education of our youth goes? My wish is that all youth to be included in this development of the country because it is not a development, it is not an achievement if we still have people who are not, ex not included into this whole justice measure. So my, my first and final wish is that every youth of South Africa, irregardless of where they come from, to be included in this technology and to make sure that they are able to know what technology means to us and also the government. So we are often told that the future of South Africa lies in the agricultural sector and specifically the agricultural sector in Eastern Cape. How will the agricultural sector be impacted, to, you, to your mind, by technology? Um, technology and also indigenous knowledge. We know that during the previous times, um, technology, before, we, before technology, the agricultural sector was driven by indigenous knowledge that our parents and also great parents had carried. Now, with the involvement of technology and also the indigenous knowledge that our parents carried, I believe that we could excel more in agriculture because that means that the technology that is driving our country now, along with the indigenous knowledge that our parents and our grandparents had, together may form a country that we may never have thought of. Let me focus on the Eastern Cape as a specific example. We know that Eastern Cape obviously excels in the agricultural sector. Now imagine what would happen using technology as a way that um, to grow the agricultural sector at large. So we believe in that Eastern Cape and also South Africa at large could easily um, you know, grow in a sense that the agricultural sector, the indigenous knowledge and also technology together would form an environment whereby we're able to grow as South Africa. Songa, it's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you very um, much. I think one day, if I live long enough, you might be the president of the country. <laughs> Thank you very much for your time.